Hello, welcome to this Werewolf Transformation After Effects tutorial. Um, I'm going to be showing you how to make something similar to this, but more specifically, uh, this one here. It's the very one we're going to be making. So, open up your After Effects, uh, get your footage of yourself on a green screen doing something similar to this. Um, I'd say use green screen over normal footage because we're going to be using the liquify tool and it will damage anything in the background by using the green screen it takes out any of that risk uh, there we go I've also got a background of a wall you might have just seen it but we've got to take out the green first so go to effects keying color key select your green um, now the job here isn't to take out the green it's just to sort of take out as much green as we can uh, I'm not going to go too in depth on how to use these tools I'll let you explore and do it yourself you might have a different system for taking out green or blue or whatever colour you're using, doesn't really matter but I'm doing this because once I've done that you can see there's a massive green bit here I'm not worried go back into key in, key light take out the rest of the green as you can see I'm now a bit transparent still doesn't mind I'm gonna knock up the black and the white here on this clip black and white and that is perfect for the use of this tutorial I'm going to say that will do I might get rid of the corner normally but anyway let's rename select your layer press enter or return or whatever you want to call it I'm going to call this one footage and go onto your background I'm going to call that one wall then go over to your effects type in liquify I think it's L I Q and it comes up there you go drop that onto your first layer which should be your footage and we're just going to close them you'll notice it's very similar to the one using Photoshop, you just smudge and do stuff like that. So oh, get rid of that, just drop it back in. Uh we can expand as well if we want. But uh I won't go too in depth again into this, I'll let you explore it yourself. We're gonna be mainly using the expand and smudge today. And the stopwatch on distortion mesh. So just open up your effects here and your liquify, turn your mesh on and you'll see there's a keyframe. We don't want it on just yet, we want to go just before we're about to use the smudge tool, so just before you transform, about there for me, I'm going to turn it on, this will put a blank keyframe in, which means when I go on to smudge my face, like so, just change the brush size, um, when I morph my face like this, you can already see the similarities to a wolf transformation, the snout pushes out, but the main thing is because we've made these keyframes it's going to do it automatically push it out when we get to that position so you might need to make a few adjustments try not to move too much with your footage if your eyeball goes where your nose was then your eye will be smudged and not your nose so we're going to go a few in front and just re-smudge everything remember to smudge straight from the back and not just from the same position otherwise we're just going to have the same piece stretch for miles we want to try and keep it as intact as we can let's have a watch at that alright I like that a few keyframes further and you'll notice it's all messed up so uh, instead of re-smudging everything I'm just going to go ahead and click the reset this will create a blank keyframe and I'll just re-smudge everything on a blank keyframe a lot easier to do than trying to re do everything let's expand my nose and my eye do a bit more smudging bring my chin up creating that snout here you notice I am looking a little less like a werewolf and more like the thing from a race ahead if anyone's seen that film um, if you haven't I dare you to watch it anyway there's our wolf snouts bit looking odd doesn't matter we're going to cover that up in a moment so you want to go into your footage layer control D enter and rename that one hair because we just duplicate the layer there and we're just going to type in the effect CC hair drop that onto your hair layer uh, like so and you'll notice I'm very furry now which doesn't help um, go into effects CC hair again I'm not going to show you how to use every single bit we're going to be using the length and the thickness today and I'm also going to be using the color in here I'm just going to make my hair darker I like that I'm also going to be using the opacity just so we can see I'm going to turn it down just enough so I can see my face but 
enough so it still looks like I'm furry. Um, I'm going to go with that for now. There's a lot more tools on here. We're also going to be using this one just here. Um, map. There we go. Turn to alpha so it's straight. And turn the opacity a bit more up for me. It might be different for you. So I say explore it yourself. This is just a basic overview. The thickness and the length is what we're going to be using now. Uh, just reset it there. There's obviously more tools which I'm not going to touch today. There's stuff like roughness. Uh, but anyway, go to just before you want the hair to come in. I'm going to say it's about there. A bit further, there we go. And we want to go to our length and thickness, turn the timers on, and turn these to zero. So at this point, we've got no hair. And go to a point where we want the hair in and retype in what they were, they were 25 and 1 point naught for me and you'll notice it morphs the hair in slowly I can move these further and closer if I want it to morph in faster or at different points uh, but too close it looks a bit weird so I'm going to just spread it out a bit more and I'm happy with that obviously to take them out you're going to need to create a keyframe so just type in something very close to your first number there uh, or change it all completely and then retype your number in and you'll notice there's keyframes and just do the same that we did before but opposite we're going to turn them to zero and you'll notice it will morph out at this point I don't want them I've got rid of them now I just need to sort out all this fur on my jumper here Right, so we want to select our layer, go onto the pen tool at the top of the screen, and just draw around our person like so. Uh, make sure that's joined there. This is a mask now. You'll notice it's the wrong way around, so you can either click invert or uh, subtract. Doesn't really matter for this one. Stick that back there. Um, we're gonna want to just move these anchor points here because I went a bit wrong. Doesn't really matter though long as that we've got it over the shirt. Uh, we're also going to feather it a bit. This will mean the edges aren't as sort of sharp. And we're going to be leaving the rest alone today, but we are going to be using the mask path. Similar to every other keyframe we've done. You make a keyframe in one point, you make another one in another, and it will morph in between the two. So we can just use these here, and you'll see they will move. This is an advantage for using the green screen footage because if you were using any other footage you'd have to mask every object in your room. Let's have a watch back of that quickly. Yeah. There we go. Hair morphs in. None of it on my jumper. So select all these layers. Go into layer. Pre-compose. Name it whatever you want. I'm going to call this one that. So we go wolf. Um, this is, we're basically done now. We're just going to go into color correction, toner. Where's toner? There it is at the top. Select my middle one. I'm going to go for a blue feel, feeling like a blue. Going to turn the opacity down a bit. This will give it a bit more creepy look. And I'm also going to go back into color correction and go into curves. It's around the bottom. Oh, it's not. It's in the middle. Going to make it a bit darker. And that's pretty much it. So we've covered green screening, we've covered liquify, CC hair, and now a bit of color correction just to add a mood. Um, I hope this has helped. If it hasn't, I'm sorry. Please comment below. Uh, sorry if it was a bit quick. I was trying to keep under the 15 minute guideline rules. And I was also trying to get it done as quick as possible so I don't bore you to death. Uh, that's pretty much it then. So quickly how to render. I'll show you how to do that. You go add to queue. You name it whatever you want. I'm going to call this morph. Oh, hold on, just close that. Morph. Save. And then make sure these are all set to these. It should automatically do that. Click render. And you can rewatch your stuff there. I won't bore you with the rendering though. I'll just let you rewatch it again here. So enjoy. <laughs>